Hi, welcome to our first video on factoring. Today we're going to cover some factoring basics and the greatest common factor, affectionately known as the GCF. Now, some of the basics are true for all factoring, so it's not just about the greatest common factor. So go ahead and have these in your notes somewhere that you can refer to for later. The first one is factors are multiplied in order to equal a product. So it's important to understand what a factor is when you're asked to factor something. So if we have two times three equals six, we have a factor times a factor equaling a product. In other words, two and three are factors of six. Likewise, if you have two binomials being multiplied to give you this trinomial here, we still have a factor times a factor equaling a product. So a factor can take different forms. So basically, when you're asked to factor a trinomial like this, you're asked to put it into the two binomial factor forms. So factoring is taking a product and rewriting it as two or more factors. Now, we also always want to factor completely, meaning as much as possible. We don't want to just factor out one piece when other pieces can go a little bit further. Think of prime factorization when you do the, the prime factor tree and you keep going as far as you can. Same idea. Now, here are some hints. First of all, be sure your polynomial is in descending powers. In other words, have the highest exponent first. Say x squared, then your x, and then your constant is always last. Two, look for a GCF first, if any. In other words, it may not have a GCF, but we always want to look because that makes the rest of the problem a lot easier if we do have to go further. Also, if your first term is negative, I always like to factor out that negative. It just makes the rest of the polynomial easier to deal with, again, if we need to go further. So what do I need to know? What tools do we need in order to factor? First of all, we need to be fairly comfortable with our multiplication facts. Also, we need to know how to distribute, how to divide, and the FOIL method. I don't use the FOIL method a whole lot when multiplying, you know, because you multiply them all the same, but that pattern of FOIL when you multiply two binomials is a huge helper when you're trying to factor into the two binomials. It's like undoing the pattern. So the FOIL method is something that's really handy to know. So let's focus on the greatest common factor. What is that? It's the largest number and or variables that are factors of every term in a polynomial. Okay, so let's look at this trinomial here. As our coefficients, we have 6, negative 12, and 9. So what's the largest number that would divide evenly into 6, 12, and 9? Good, 3. So 3 is going to be part of our GCF. And then we look at all the terms. They all have an x. There are 4 x's in the first one, 3 x's being multiplied in the second one, and two x's in the third one. So we want to know how many x's can we divide out from each term. We want as many as we can, but it has to be the same amount from all three. We can take out four from the first one, but we can't take out four from the third one or the second one. So the most x's that we can divide out of all three would be two. So every term is divisible by three and x squared. Therefore, our GCF is 3x squared. Now let's recall distributing. If we have the monomial 3x squared here being multiplied by this trinomial, we would distribute that 3x squared into every term by multiplication. So when we distribute to the first term, we would get 12x to the fifth. To the second term, negative 6x cubed. And the third term, negative 15x squared. The reason this is important is because you can consider factoring out the GCF like the distributive property backwards. Instead of starting with the parentheses and multiplying in, we're going to start with the trinomial or binomial and we're going to factor out or divide out. So here we have 15x cubed minus 10x squared plus 35x. First we need to find our greatest common factor. 15, 10, and 35, they're all divisible by 5, nothing larger. Also, all of them have an x. The last one has a single x, so that's going to be part of our GCF. Every term is divisible by 5 and x, 
So 5x is our GCF. Notice the GCF is on the outside of the parentheses, and now we're going to do the distributive property backwards. So we need to figure out 5x times what term would give us 15x cubed? Well, 5 times 3 and x times x squared. So we have 3x squared. 5x times what will give us a negative 10x squared? Negative 2x. And last, 5x times what would give us 35x? Good, a positive 7. So that's our result. That's the distributive property backwards. You can imagine, what would I need to multiply it by to get this term? What would I need to multiply by to get this term? There's another way of looking at it. Factoring out a GCF is like dividing out the largest common factor. Well, we determined the GCF was 5x, so we're going to divide everybody by the 5x. So the 5x is still our GCF on the outside, and now we're going to factor it out by division. If we look at the first term, 15x cubed divided by 5x, that would give us 3x squared. The second term here, negative 10x squared divided by 5x would give us a negative 2x. And then lastly, 35x divided by 5x would give us a plus 7. So we end up with the same answer that we got doing the distributive property backwards. It's the exact same idea, but some people find it handy actually dividing by the GCF so they can see what's left inside the parentheses. Okay, same result. Now here's kind of a special example. We have a 24, a 4, and a 2 as far as the numerical coefficients here, and the largest number that divides in evenly in all of those is 2 but we don't have an x here in the last one. We have two in the first one, one in the second one, but we don't have an x in the third one. Therefore, our GCF is just the number two. They do not all have an x in common. It's the greatest common factor. Also, when we divide out the two, well, 24 is divisible by two, we get one. Four divided by two, we get two. A lot of people look at, oh, two divided by two, and they use the, the word cancel and they get slash happy, and they think, oh, it cancels, meaning it disappears, and it's just gone. The problem is, two divided by two doesn't disappear. Two divided by two is one. So be sure that you have that one showing up, and you can always distribute the two back in to make sure that you get your original. Also, here's another example, three x squared plus five x minus nine. Well, 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3, but the 5 doesn't, okay? So remember, it's all or nothing. They all have the same factor, or there's no common factor. So there's no numerical common factor. Also, the first term has an x in it, the second term has an x in it, but the third term does not. Therefore, this example has no GCF, and that's okay. Sometimes there's a GCF, sometimes there's not. We may be able to factor it further in a different way, and we'll show other methods on, on the next videos. But right now, just the GCF, there's not one. So, here's some examples for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video, look for a GCF, factor it out, show what's left, and then um, go ahead and hit play when you've tried them and you want to see the results. Pause it. Go ahead and try it. Okay, let's see how we did. Remember our instructions were to factor out the GCF. Here with 18 and 24, they're both divisible by six. That's the highest number. The first term has five X's. The second one has three X's. We want to take out as many as possible, but it has to be the same amount of X's from each. So we can take out three X's from both. So our GCF is going to be a six X cubed. And let's see what's left. 6x cubed times a 3x squared will give us the 18x to the fifth. 6x cubed times 4 will give us the negative 24, or times the negative 4, gives us the negative 24x cubed. And you can always distribute back in to double check and make sure you get your original back. Let's take a look at the second one. Here, the 8, the 12, and the 4, they're all divisible by 4. And they all have an x, so we can take out a 4x. 
And again, one of the methods, as opposed to just visualizing the distributed property backwards, is you can physically divide out each term there by your GCF, and that will help you determine what's left. So let's see what we've got. 8x cubed divided by 4x would leave us with a 2x squared. Negative 12x squared divided by 4x is a negative 3x. And here, 4x divided by 4x is 1. Don't get into the habit of just saying, oh, they cancel out, and you start getting slash happy, and it disappears. There is a term there. So this is your result. Now, I know I've circled it here because we're focusing on a GCF. Remember at the beginning when we started talking about factoring basics, I said you always want to factor as completely as possible. This trinomial here oops, can be factored into two binomials. So it can be factored further, and we're going to learn this later. So this is more to come. <laughs> okay, and we'll show you how to do this on the next video. But for right now, let's take a look at C, where we have 12x to the fourth plus 9x cubed plus 2x squared. The bummer here with the coefficients is that the 12 and 9 have a 3 in common. The 12 and the 2 have a 2 in common, but there's not a common factor among all three. Therefore, we can't take out a number, but we can take out the variables. There's 4x's here, 3x's here, 2x's here, we want to take out as many as we can, but it has to be the same amount from each. So the most that we can take out is going to be the x squared, always the smallest. Okay, So we can take out the x squared and be left with 12x squared plus 9x plus 2, which this one cannot be factored further, so you would be finished here. So how did you do? Kind of double check yourself, see where your errors might have been. Did you forget, you know, one of the terms inside? Did you take out a GCF that really wasn't a GCF? Once you determine where some of your errors are, then it's easy to correct them. Those are the things that you need to look out for. So just to recap, to remember, always look for a GCF first. Not all polynomials will have a GCF. Factoring out a GCF is distributing backwards or dividing out the GCF. And we can always multiply back in to check. The only thing I warn about this is I've had a lot of students, they're asked to factor, so they factor it, and then they multiply back in to check it, but then they circle their check. Well, when you check it, that should be the same thing as your original problem. So be sure you, you circle the factoring part, then check it to make sure it matches the original problem, okay? So thanks for watching. Be sure and watch our other videos on grouping and factoring trinomials to get those two binomials that we're looking for and other special factors as well, okay? So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, watch the video again, look for other videos, ask your teacher, ask your tutors, ask your friends, but ask, okay? Don't let your pride keep you from passing. You're almost done, I can feel it. Have a good time and we'll see you again soon.